Mm -hmm. Hi everybody, my name is Daniela Uche Oji. I'm one of the creators of Alternative Society NFT. And um, this is an introduction to our podcast. So our podcast is called The Unconventional Career Path. And we're going to be talking about uh, people who follow the unconventional career path, um, which is anything within the arts industry, tech industry, or anything that quote unquote is not the conventional engineer, lawyer, and a doctor career path that most people think that there's money in um so i myself i studied 3d animation and visual effects and i was in art school throughout my my life in nigeria i went to boarding school in nigeria i uh, lived in lagos then came here to study what i wanted to study um because i couldn't find it in nigeria if not i wouldn't have come at the time that i came um but i still think it's very necessary for people to understand that this career exists like in in Nigeria as well and we have Nigerians who are creative that have a career in this and are actually like making money out of it so I would like to introduce Uzo. Uzo is an animator illustrator and character designer and he's based in Lagos. Hi Uzo. Hi Daniela. Thanks Hi. for having me. Yes, thank you for coming. So wanted to just talk, just have an organic conversation about uh, just being an artist and being Nigerian. I don't know, like, what did you, when you were in, in high school, did you go to, like, did you, were you in art class? Like, how did, how did you get to the place where you are now? Well, um, when you say school, do you mean, like, secondary school or university? Yeah, secondary you know? school. I mean, I feel like it starts at secondary school anyway because you know how like our secondary school was they have like art class, science class, and and commercial. Yeah. And then people in art class they will tell you you are going to be broke. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it, it started from it actually started from primary school. You know, then we used to um, draw uh, comics. We, we you know kind of like trace over you know comic books to. Uh, or to copy some of the poses of the characters in comic books uh, in school then, in primary school. That's where it all started. Uh, we would also do, um, you know, like comics, very funny, funny um, style of drawing human beings and, mm -hmm. you know, do like comic books and that kind of stuff uh, until secondary school. In secondary school, I actually, funny enough, went into, into science class, not art class. You know, because I actually like science, you know, um, I, I ended up studying engineering, electrical, I'm a graduate of the um, University of Benin, electrical electronics, engineering, BS, BNG that I'm not using, you know, I, I, never, <laughs> I never bothered to go get my degree from school till this day, you know, my, my certificate is still in school. Anyway, so yeah, it all started from um, primary school, then to university, not then to secondary school. In secondary school, I would draw, um, you know, you know, biology. We get to draw diagrams. Um, mm -hmm. I love to draw diagrams. You know, I didn't like biology, but I loved the drawing part of biology. You know, uh, and then I had the I had the good fortune of being skilled enough to be like the most wanted guy in school then you know to do diagrams for other people especially from chicks you know so it was it was, it was a kind of flex. yeah it, it was a kind of flex for me you know to be able to do drawings for for ladies and all that but yeah so that's what i really did mostly in um, in secondary school then the transition from secondary school to university was when i had to do some uh, personal research on my own to grow as an artist and that's when i started doing more of, um, portrait drawings for people you know i'll take mm -hmm. pictures uh, i'll get people's photographs and then we trace over the photographs do like this kind of grid on it then we draw um do like pencil sketches frame the pencil sketches and um, for these people and then they'll pay me I even did that in, in university, you know, to make some money, some like side hustle in university. I wasn't making so much from it. My profit on that thing was like maybe 2,000 Naira. And 2,000 Naira was a lot then in, in, as a student, you know, as a hustling student. So yeah, so that was like my background. Um, eventually when I graduated, you know, up, up until my final year, I did not know what animation was. Like I did not what I did not know what the word animation meant, you know. So uh, it was after I graduated from university that I now you know picked up interest in comics, and then it was from comics that I now kind of morphed and you know changed paths and directions into animation. So yeah, that's that was my journey. 
Mm-hmm. You know what's funny? Because I feel like every every engineer low key is an artist. I know too many engineers that have become like animators, photographers, some type of like yeah. just leave the engineer. I don't know how that is, but I usually would notice that engineers are usually like always in the design field or some type of creative uh, field. I know me myself. I've been drawing my whole life, I've, and I wanted to do three things that I was going to do. I was going to be a lawyer, if anything. Like, if I didn't follow the part of being an artist, I was definitely going to be a lawyer. Um, and I also wanted to do something with computers. So I grew up around computers. Um, so I was super obsessed with computers, and I was super obsessed with arts. And then I was also obsessed with storytelling. And then I used to like fancy all these music video directors and all these people. So I used to watch like Media Labi. I was a big fan of Media Labi. I was a big fan of Chesson. And then um, I watched a particular MTV based like interview that Chesson did. This was back, back, back in like I think it was like 2000 and I don't 2011 or so, or something like that. He did an interview. And they asked him like, "What did you study in school?" And he said he studied uh, 3D animation and special effects abroad. And I remember at that time I was like. I was thinking of what I was going to do. I remember I said I was going to do software engineering because I was so like trying to figure out what it was going to be. It was either I just needed to blend everything. I didn't really know how to do that. And that's that that time, like when you're in school, they're telling you, oh, you're not going to be successful as an artist, so you better find something else to do. So I was so conflicted. And then I watched that and I saw, I just went immediately and I looked up like through the animation. I saw like computer arts as a career and on that computer arts there were so many careers under it. Now mm-hmm. my parents were like you see let's see if we can find 3D animation in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. We checked for schools, Saya. We didn't find um and at, at that point it was like, oh you're lucky that you were born abroad so you can just go because we're only finding it in America or in Amsterdam or in Germany like you will not see it in like Nigeria or Lagos as a thing then I was able to go and study like 3D animation and even when I started studying 3D animation the first before I even got into it fully when I was in in high school boarding school there was this particular computer teacher who knew how to do blender so he was teaching me how to use blender at the time that time blender was terrible I hated blender (laughs) because It felt like like a whole technical. It was very technical type of situation that, you, and it just you could tell that the people that made the software at that time, it seemed like they were just using it to test people's brain, because it was it was such a terrible software at that time. It was so difficult to use. And then when I, when I started at Drexel, they introduced us to Maya, and that was like a whole new world. So I was struggling from like moving to a different country and then changing software as well and now trying to settle in so my first like yeah i didn't pass in 3d animation i didn't pass at all i was really just feeling up and i was not thinking are you sure you're supposed to be here (laughs) what you're supposed to do um but later down the line we're able to find like there's a track of of like animation that is linked to film so mm-hmm. that part is like under the post-production of film so that's like more so they're teaching you how to like you are it's more tempered than actually doing 3d animation in like a the whole technical sense of, of it so you can be more of an artist as a 3d animator and then there are also people that are more technical technical and uh, physics physics type of people because uh, mm-hmm. I've never been a science person. I know I was failing biology in flying colors when I was in school. <laughs> I was also drawing for people as well. Um, if, if anybody needed to draw anything, I would draw diagrams. That was the I was best at drawing diagrams. If it was to draw diagrams, I wish we could pass biology by drawing diagrams. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was doing. Um, so in Lagos, right, how are you seen? as an animator like in Lagos like what's the industry like in Lagos right now in animation well I think the industry is still at a very nascent stage it's still very much infant 
um, cons considering the size, the volume um, of the industry, like when I say volume, I mean volume of transactions, the, the market size of the industry in Nigeria. You know, I, I don't think um, Ernst Young did a research, uh, Ernst and Young, sorry, Ernst and Young did a research, a white paper research on the animation industry a couple of years ago. I think that was in 2019 or something like that. You know, um, so if you, can, if you want to get the actual numbers, you can get it from, from them. You mm -hmm. know, um, I should be able to get it, but not at the moment. I have to ask a, a couple of people. But my point is that um, I know animation studios, like I know people who own animation studios in maybe almost all the big animation studios. And I know, the, I have an idea of the volume of transaction they do in a year. You know, and if I was to give like a sum of it, I would say it's it's definitely less than a billion naira, and that's mm. really small. You know, that's yeah. really small compared to, compared to the size of the animation industry out there, which is like two hundred and something billion dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I would say that we are still at the very nascent stage. Um, although in South Africa, for example, I know we're talking about Nigeria, but I would say in South Africa, um, just to mention, they have a much bigger, a more a much bigger animation industry there. You know, you have uh, like Triggerfish. Triggerfish has done a couple of feature films, and I'm saying feature films that um, had a budget of at least twenty-five million dollars or something like that. Mm. You know, a feature film that actually featured Hollywood actors, like Liam Neeson was. Liam Neeson was actually one of the voice actors in um, one of their films. I think it's Pumba. The, main, the name of the film is Kumba. Anyway, so I'm just saying that, you know, the overall industry in Africa generally, not just in Nigeria, is not so big, but um, Af South Africa is doing way better than Nigeria. Nigeria is still at a very nascent stage. Um, we have talent. We have raw talent. We have but plenty the, talent. Yeah, but the problem I see is skill. So there's a difference between talent mm -hmm. and skill. Skill is when you take you know how to fit into a pipeline you can produce you can you are ready for to be hired you know you are production ready that's what skill is nigerians mm -hmm. most i won't say all nigerians i don't speak for everybody but it is rare to find skilled people that are ready for production in nigeria you know so mm -hmm. that's where that i would say um i can count in my fingers the you know the best of the best that i think are worthy to be hired by you know um, top studios in the world but not too many you know so mm -hmm. i'm saying this, i'm not saying this to brag i'm saying this to you know to, as a wake-up call for you know for every you. other person out there who's interested you know to take this thing seriously you know, it's not mm -hmm. easy it takes time it takes time it takes passion you know um it takes consistency because we've been in this thing for a while now mm -hmm. you know, but there, there, there is actually um, an opportunity there uh, that we need to look into so yes talent needs to needs to advance to scale in nigeria and the overall size of the industry in nigeria is quite small so yeah i don't know if i answered mm -hmm. the question mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like because for some reason i feel like that that skill level is like people have the talent and the talent is just hitting there until the thing just becomes like popular so i know like animation became popular mostly um when this that's when i started hearing about it the most and when i started seeing people like uh, animators being sought after the most was when this whole nft metaverse thing started coming out so there has yeah. to be like so, some type of trend to like make those people sort out but in nigeria it's more so like the entire environment is telling you that if you want to do anything like that you are not like it's not anything so people are more focused on trying to um start certain types of certain types of businesses or going to certain types of fields because they feel like that's the only place that you can make money um i know even when i said i wanted to go and do animation people were like eh you want to go and do anim animation as what like what are you going to be doing you want to make cartoon <laughs> it was, i mean luckily i didn't have parents that i didn't have parents that that were that thoughts like that because my mom on her own she studied theater art so because of that like we didn't i didn't oh, necessarily wow. have parents that wouldn't say oh go and follow your path because my mom was an artist my dad he studied political science even though he wanted to be a lawyer but he but they never really thought like that but to them it was more so 
follow like the passion that you whatever your talent is because i remember when i mentioned that i wanted to do software engineering they're like are you sure <laughs> are you sure you're software engineering <laughs> because it, it's like deep down you have to kind of do something that you enjoy because one thing that i've noticed that a lot of people change careers so many times in their lives but for me i don't see myself changing because i feel like from the beginning i was able to blend the things that i wanted to do so now for the rest of my life i'm going to continue doing like following that path and then finding other things that are within that path to now bloom that industry um south africa on its own too i think from the beginning of time has always been like the targeted place for africa um and even with lion king lion king had like south africa as a base of most of the things mm-hmm. that they did even with language and all so you can yeah. tell like why south africa is like more advanced in that sense but i think lagos in itself is going to be the first state in nigeria to catch up yeah. um with, with all those things and then there's electricity and then there's our government that they, they would also think that those things are unnecessary <laughs> as well yeah. Um, so yeah i mean uh what do you would you say that your okay let me say with regards to your family right did they understand fully what you were doing until you started making ready for me or was it <laughs> how, how did that go <laughs> Uh, my family is, is, I love my family so I don't I don't mean to say anything you know that would offend anybody but the truth is that they, they didn't really they were not like fully supportive they just wanted me to do something lucrative you know uh, as the first child first born child in my family mm-hmm. uh, it was easy to you know to be financially independent and, mm-hmm. finan- and, be, and for them to be financially dependent to some degree on me you know, I'm not the only child anyway where I have siblings. But um my point is that they and they mean they meant well, like they actually mean well. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying this our parents want the best for us. Best but best. in their own in, in their own understanding, what they believe is, you know, you need to get a job, um, make sure you, you you get a good grade with your degrees and all that, and then apply for a job and then follow that path, you know. But I, I just had this strong feeling that you know, um, if God has blessed me with knowledge to make change, to make a change, a positive change and an impact, why do I need to compete for jobs, limited jobs with other exactly. um, people who think that way? You know, so I, I just decided, you know what, I'm setting myself apart from everybody else. And I know this is not easy, this is not funny, but I'm ready to, you know, roll up my sleeves and get my hands dirty and see how far I can go with that. So, yes. They were not fully supportive, but you know, after a while, when it started to see that this thing is profitable, you know, then they got they got on board. So yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much the story of every um, almost every Nigerian. You know, mm-hmm. well, our parents are very hard on us in this part of the world. So yeah, yeah, and I think it, it can be beneficial, but then it's just like I just feel like there's a lot of things that should be that they should they should change a lot of like directions with regards to like thinking. Um, because I think I think from what I even saw when I got here, art is probably one of the most lucrative. Like people don't even respect it enough for somebody to have mm-hmm. a painting that is thirty six by forty eight in Lagos and you're selling it for how much? Ten thousand naira? Is it lie? You, is it lie? It's a big lie <laughs> because if you post that somewhere on like Artsy or you go somewhere abroad to auction that, take it to a gallery. You are going to be they are going to bid that thing at like 20k one because of the mm. size and depending on the kind of artwork that is you see people that are painting and are selling it 10,000 10, naira like there's no reason to do that but it's because of the the environment has has set it that low so it kind of remains that like that even um, yeah. with the nfts that we're promoting too because they are like artworks and they are linked to like tech People don't fully like understand it in that sense so they are feeling like oh what am i buying artwork so i'm just going to spend money and buy artwork and what am i going to do with it but then if you start thinking about the utilities or the many things that we're doing like the podcast and all then people start getting interested in it but we already know that nigeria as a whole art is not something that they're really going to like spend money to buy um or appreciate in that sense okay 
we are back. So, um, how many years have you been doing character design, illustration, animation for? Been, I would say like 2014 or something like that. Yeah, 2014. Okay. So, from 2014 to date, that's about eight years. Or yeah, eight years. Mm -hmm. When did you get like your first big client and like what was your reaction after? Afterwards, yeah, that was that month back. Month back, like I said, the money wasn't so much, but when that was that was the biggest money anybody had ever paid me for us for an ask for, you know, and that was when I realized that this thing has there's potential, this talent that God has given to me, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, so that that was that month back. That was like 2014. Yeah, that was 2014. Okay. Have you done any like because I I think I saw like you had done some things for like Netflix and and people like that. Oh, is that what you meant? Okay, so oh, yeah, yeah so I've been overall. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so the local we have the local clients which was Diamond Park. We have international clients which was Netflix. You know, um, I you know I consider myself extremely fortunate to have mm -hmm. got that opportunity. Because none of I, I did not apply for any of these jobs, and these guys just reached out to me. You know, mm -hmm. so and this, you know, I would say that this is, you know, clearly by the hand of God. You know, that yes. I these opportunities. So I just want to put that one out there first. Uh, the first, the first international studio, the first major, because I've gotten jobs from other studios. You know, I've gotten jobs from Sci Up, from uh, Mind Show, from Stupid Boys, like some other. I've gotten from NPR. Some other smaller um, companies, but animation studios, the first animation studio that hired me was Marvel Studios. You know, mm -hmm. Marvel Studios first. And when I saw my when I saw my the alerts that entered my account, I was like, man. I was like so this is this That's what this did. It's alright, it's alright. You know, so yes, that was yeah, that was the moment. That was the moment of truth. You know, so I was like, man. So it took me eight years to get to this point, or seven, ten or seven years last year. So it took me seven years to get to this point to see this kind of alert, man. It was really worth it. You know, so yeah, so that was, that was the main, my first major job, uh, Marvel Studios before Netflix and all that. My first, I think it was. This was like a brand that I did, I did graphics for. And theirs was like was six thousand dollars. <laughs> mm. I was like, I, <laughs> I was like, correct. <laughs> That's when I was like, okay, this is the path. Just hone yeah. on this path. Because then you don't even know that graphic designers or people who do like some type of animation make that kind of money. When you now see yeah. it, you're like, this is the way. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of. Uh, how did you? Put yourself out like did you go to like was it mostly just LinkedIn or did you have other like platforms that you used to put yourself out there? I used to be very active on Art Station. Um after a while I stopped so it clearly wasn't Art Station. Um I have always been consistent on Instagram until recently because of the amount of work um plus I have a child. My wife just mm -hmm. my wife put to us so since then everything has been Thank you, thank you. So since then, it has been crazy, like to to find time to do to post online has been very difficult for me, uh, because I'm combining with work as well. So from it's actually from um, it's actually mostly on Instagram and LinkedIn. I also post on Twitter and Facebook, but I think most traction came from Instagram and LinkedIn. Um, okay. I have got. Okay. I've gotten, you know, talent acquisition and recruiters reach out to me directly from LinkedIn. You know, so yes, um, LinkedIn. If I uh, if I was to put anyone first, I'll put LinkedIn first or Instagram. Uh, LinkedIn is the wheel. Even me too. Like I think at a certain point, I just deleted my designs from Instagram because I felt like it was more so people commenting and there was no. It didn't yeah. have any effects like that and people's yeah. comments are great like it kind of encourages you but at the end of the day like i don't that's not my focus <laughs> in the sense but you want to put it on somewhere that people that 
you want certain connections to be able to see you and so that you to be feeling like your stuff is is, is blooming mm-hmm. and going there but some people have also tried to say oh, put yourself post your designs on instagram again and i'm like i'll think about it <laughs> i'll think about it that's why we really i just i feel like linkedin is my favorite social that like media network yes. so even, would you classify linkedin as social media <laughs> yeah, well, it's part of social media. It's corporate media. I think corporate there's media. anyone that has corporate media, I guess. Mm-hmm. But yeah, LinkedIn, I think, I think LinkedIn is more powerful than Instagram. I'm one of, this, uh, one of those advocates for LinkedIn because I've seen how, you know, um, I posted content that went viral on LinkedIn, you know, that did not go viral on Instagram. So mm-hmm. LinkedIn doesn't necessarily, the, the, the advantage you get from LinkedIn is your work has some certain a certain degree of merit within itself. Yeah. The popularity of your post is based on its merit, the merit of that post. It's not based on how many followers you have or how many and that's what makes LinkedIn. So people will see your stuff if you know, the right people will see your stuff. The people that are interested in your stuff will see it on LinkedIn. As opposed to Instagram where it's based on popularity and how many followers and all that, you know. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh no, definitely. Right, like you connect with the right people. They will just reach out to you, just like VP of where is reaching out to me. Hi, <laughs> I yeah. just connect. <laughs> oh, it's not to say by Instagram, but uh, anyway, I feel like this was a productive conversation, and we have yep. achieved what we came here to achieve. <laughs> Um, at yeah. least, well, do you have any advice for people who are like artists or who want to get into this field? Um, just any word of encouragement because it's very, very, it's very, very difficult, especially like not only Nigeria, but the entire Africa as well as the entire world sees like careers like this as things that are not as profitable. Um, at least until now that Metaverse came out, but. Do you have any advice for people who are looking to get into this field? Just like words of encouragement. Yeah, so it depends on what you know, what role you want to play in the industry. If you want to play the business role, there's there's room for you. If you want to play the artistic role, there's room for you. You know, you don't have to be an artist for you to thrive in the animation industry. Yeah, you know, you, you can even be a good a great marketer, you know, and thrive well. You could be good at managing people. A production, um, a producer, or something like that. You know, so it, it depends on where. There's always room for everybody. But what I would say, uh, as an advice to the business people first, for the artists, to so the business people, make sure you know the numbers, understand the markets first. Are you targeting um, the market in Nigeria? Most animation studios I know in Nigeria are targeting corporate brands because of advertising opportunities. You know, but these guys, they, they, they price our work so cheap. And the reason why they do that is because they have freelancers. There are many freelancers out there who can do work for cheap. So, right. do, you, do you realize that if you're going to start an animation business in Nigeria, you're going to be competing with freelancers? You know, so, and if you're not competing with freelancers, if you don't want to compete with freelancers, then maybe you shouldn't be looking at the Nigerian market, you should be looking at the international market, the global market right. as a whole. Because I mean, if you have zero point zero zero one percent of two hundred and seventy three billion dollars, that's a lot of money. So why not look at so? And this is what I tell people: like, why not fish in an ocean uh, rather than fishing in a pond? Because if you fish in an ocean, there's probability that you can catch a dolphin, you can catch a a shark, you can catch any kind of fish in an in an ocean. But the likelihood that you catch a a shark in a pond is very low. You know, so um, I, I, that's my own advice. I'm not saying anybody should follow it, but this is just my own advice. I rather, I rather fish in the global market. I rather put myself out you know, in the global space. You know, I mean, if you, if you don't, well, let's say you're happy with. If you want to get to the point where you know me and Daniela, like we said, where we got our first a lot of you know thousands of dollars, you know, and it felt good to us, and it, it, it it would feel good to you when it gets to that if you consider. You know, put, put, putting yourself out there in the global space. You know, so consider the global space. Don't think local. Um, you know, you can put, you can start local because I mean, I'm based in Lagos, Nigeria, and I'm working with the studio. So you can be local. Um, you can be positioned locally, but you can have to be known globally. So that's what mm-hmm. I would say. For business people, for artists, 
I'll say that you know, as an artist, make sure that you you know your stuff. You know, um, I, I would advise that you you streamline your your specialty and your expertise to a few areas. Don't try to do too many things. If you only do too many things, that's great, but that's when you're young. If you're getting to your thirties, you know, if you're in your thirties, then I think at that point you should be thinking about streamlining, you know, to a, a more niche area and focus on that area and be very good at it. You know, the, the, the animation industry in the world, the way the pipeline works is that they're going to hire you for one job. I'm currently doing one job at Marvel. Even though I can do many, I can do 3D animation, I can do um, I can do rigging, I can do character rigging, I can do character design, I can do um, uh, what, what other things are there. I can do various things in animation, but they are not hiring me to do everything. They are hiring me to do one thing, which is character design. You know, so what I'm saying is, as an artist, try to streamline to a special area. If you're good at the environment design, be the best. Try to be the best. And you know, when I say the best, I'm saying be the best within yourself. Not the best thing, not necessarily like competing with others. Because one thing I did, you know, that really helped me was that I wasn't, I didn't see myself as, uh, yes, I understood that I was, you know, in a competition on the work stage, but I saw how, I, I saw an opportunity to to tell our own African stories and to show myself in my own uniqueness. Because my own uniqueness is African. I don't know any other, I've never lived in America before, so it's what I'm going to tell my people, what I'm going to tell my own stories and to show myself is from the own of the, um, the, the legs of living in Africa, you know, so that's when I started doing character design Guinea and doing all these kind of things. That's my own uniqueness. So find your unique voice as an artist. If it is, and be true to yourself, you know, if you're an, if you're an African, don't be trying to do superhero stuff. Don't be trying to do um, um, X-Men or, you know, Captain mm-hmm. Marvel and all these crazy things. Don't try to do popular stuff. Nothing wrong with popular stuff, nothing wrong with fan art, but have your own voice. Because when they hire you, when the studios hire you, they are hiring you to solve a problem for them. They are not hiring you to come and do um, Spider-Man. They are hiring you to solve a problem. A character designer is a problem solver. They are going to give you a, they are going to give you a brief, a brief that is um, in a written brief that doesn't have any pictures or anything, and then you are going to have to figure out figure it out yourself and do something, bring it, you know, find the visual, um, give that written brief a visual representation. That's what mm-hmm. your that's what your job is as a character designer. So I'm just saying this, um, let's find our own voice, let's, you know, try to focus on a few things, run and do plenty of things, you know, and um, and be good at what we do. So I think that's that's the best advice for artists. For business people have said it already. So and please don't um, don't be discouraged, you know. I'm saying this thing because I grew up in Nigeria and Nigeria is tough. You know, we, just during this our call, we had power failure. You know, so I'm saying that Nigeria is a tough place, but if you can make it in Nigeria, if you can make it in Lagos, you can make it anywhere. You know, so don't, don't give up. Yeah, so don't give up. Don't don't let your environment discourage you. Um, there's um, there's always there's always room for growth, there's always room for progress. That opportunity will always present itself. Just be prepared. The opportunity will come. So yeah, I guess that's my best uh, advice for everybody. Okay. Thank you so much, Uzo. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for uh, listening. Hopefully this is helpful. And as many people as possible could be encouraged by this. We're going to do more of these kind of podcasts. We'll reach out to like other artists and people in tech or people who are doing some type of unconventional career path and we'll just talk to them and get advice for you and just tips and tricks that you could use as well to to um, focus so you can get to that place that you want to be i know you want to be um well thank you so much for uh watching thank you so much for listening thank you Uzo, for joining the call and having this conversation with me because this was no also me venting as well <laughs> thank, you. thank you thank you so much